Hello everybody, welcome to the video. This is Jamie for Wonders Games. Today we're doing the games pickup video. Okay, hopefully the microphone is working. Unfortunately, my camcorder fell over due to my stupid tripod. It landed on the jack and bent the jack. So I've actually bent it back, plugged it back in. I don't think it's working. But anyway, this is what I bought in March, April 2021. First game I bought on Amiga, this is PP Hammer and Dramatic Weapon. And then this is actually a custom made box made by Retro Phase Handmade Editions. Because this is a game I desperately wanted the box, and it's incredibly rare. And of course, it's so expensive. I desperately wanted to get it. So yes, it was a bit of hesitation, but it's a brilliant quality box. I have to admit. Meet PB Hammer, a man with a mission. Help him clear out over 2,500 screens of treasure, potions, and secret rooms before this time runs out. With 70 caverns to work through, from cold ice caves to sizzling pyramids, it's just as well PP has brought his secret weapon. A pneumatic drill, plenty of features and puzzles will ensure you that all you need is your wits and your fast moving action adventure. There you go, superb. There we go, superb game, PP Hammer and his pneumatic drill came out in the year 1991. Superb, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so the game is PP Hammer and his pneumatic weapon, a 901 video game for the Mega Cobra 64, developed by Traveling Bit Productions. It's a platform game with puzzle elements, influenced by 1983 video game Load Runner. In the game, the player controls a character called PP Hammer, who is requested to discover all the treasure from a series of more than 60 levels. Pretty game, long game, but never actually finished before. Maybe a future long play series, who knows? But anyway, find all the treasure and find the exit door. There you go, short and sweet, but the first level's UDR. There we go, fantastic, you've done it. Now prepare for the next level. There we go. Superb. Okay, level two is Castle Master. The levels are divided into four graphical themes. Ancient Rome, Ancient Egypt, Medieval Castle, and Ice. The fifth theme is Legoland, which appears in the bonus level. Which is good fun, and if you, of course, if you do the bonus level successfully in the very limited time you have, you can actually get yourself additional life. But anyway, lots of enemies and lots of traps in this game, but you can also get potions. Yellow makes you invisible, and you cannot take the potions with you to the next level, so we're going to use it. We are now the invisible man. Blue makes you jump higher, and red replenishes lost energy. Now, you do have a draining energy bar, and if you fall in water or fire, it will drain it very quickly, so don't stay in there for too long. But anyway, we've got to try and find the yellow key, and some things are actually hidden in the rocks. And you can also pick up a icon, which is an oil icon, which makes you drill faster. Anyway, F4. Superb, I love the sound effects too. Right, on we go. Around here somewhere is another life. There you go, boom, pow. Go through there, takes us to there. There you go, doors open. Brilliant. There you go, when he goes in, he shakes his bootay. Little dance, fantastic! You've done it. Now prepare for the next level. Welcome to Egypt. Each level in the game is made up of regular blocks and contain various things, including treasure, enemies, locked doors, bonus items, and traps. PP Hammer carries a jackhammer, which allows him to drill through blocks that he's standing next to. As in Load Runner, drilling more than one block requires the blocks to require creating a triangle-shaped cavity more than one block wide, and blocks reappear after a short time. If a block appears on top of your character, it will kill your character. Right, okay, another superb level. We all try and find a blue key. We've got one, we're going to use it immediately. Trap the ant in place, there we go. This one also has a bonus level icon. So don't avoid the mud, it will slow you down. Avoid the fire, it will burn you. Right, around here somewhere is an icon which takes to the bonus level. There we go, bonus rounds. Right, you can also pick up fruit and veg along the way, but we are trying to find the additional life. Like I say, not a lot of time, we've got to be really quick, so making mistakes, you're probably not going to get that life. Ten seconds, over in a flash. There we go, bananas, life. Good. Superb, there you go, has a little backflip. Look how happy he is. Fair play. Okay, here we go again. So we'll go through the portal. Well done. Stranger. 
Okay, so we're back to the start again, but we got all the treasure now. So we've got to try and find the exit door. Should be fine. But these first few levels, no issues at all. Just don't burn yourself. It's very easy done. Like I say, you get traps. Not quite as many as a bit dangerous, but there are a lot in place. You can replenish your energy if you have the red potion. And you can also jump onto the ladders. That's fantastic. Right, avoid the enemies. There we go. Jump, jump. Right, go to the exit. There we go. Drill through. Good pal. Have some of that. Fantastic. Look at him go. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, one more level. We'll do the ice riddle. PB Hammer can collect treasures and various power up potions lying around the level. When he's collected all the treasure, the exit door will open and going through the exit door completes the level. After completing each level, a password is displayed. Land of Plan continue at a later time. Right. One's good, two are bad. Either you're going to fall or you get burnt to a crisp. Right, now we want to do yellow. Like I've got enough keys. However, you can't hold many items in your possession. Okay, so we've got to do some serious drilling, but over here is some oil. You use it immediately. It makes you drill a lot faster. But it's limited. All weapons in this game are limited. It does tell you at the bottom of the screen. But you've got to be very tactical in this game. One mistake, you can result in getting trapped or getting killed by a spawning block. This is the ice riddle. Right, go down there, pick up a coin. There we go. Uh, wait for this to respawn and we'll go to the next chapter. In the meantime, let's start the drilling. Get it on the way, get it going. To there, to there. And falling from a great big height won't kill your character. There you go, extra life, superb. Right, avoid the rolling snowballs. Superb, the door is open, but still a lot to do yet. This is the ice riddle after all. Right, we've got to try and avoid the hidden points. Every time you hit one, it doesn't kill you, it just sends you back to the start. Go boom pow. Right, spikes. Do I need to explain? Avoidable costs. It's not an instant kill. It'll drain your energy. Your energy can drain very, very quickly. There you go, drill. Okay. Now we've got invisible platforms. Okay, to there. To there. Go boom pow! There we go. Pee hammer. Superb on the Mega. There we go. <laughs> on to the next game. Next game I bought on the Mega. This is Primal Rage. Again, it's a mint box. Now, I've never actually seen or played this game on the Mega before. But anyway, it's superb quality. The number one arcade game of Warm to Earth is Unleashed. Features the first ever full stop motion animation, a colossal fighting engine for incredible hit combos, and a massive number of normal moves, special moves, and spectacular fatalities. One mother hub of the game. There you go. Okay, I have never ever ever played this or seen it on the Mega before. This is Primal Rage. Okay, this is Primal Rage, a first series of fighting video game developed and released by Tyra Games in arcades in 1994. The player takes control of one of seven large beasts that battle each other to determine the planet's fate. Matches feature many of the conversions from the fighting games of the era, including special moves and gory finishing manoeuvres. Ports were released for home consoles and personal computers. Efforts to perfectly emulate the arcade edition were unsuccessful due to the use of unusual copy protection methods. Toys, comics and novels and other merchandise tie-ins were also produced. I quite like it, it's really good actually. Of course it's never going to be as good as the original, but of course it was always going to be a difficult task to port a game like that to the Amiga. But it looks okay. But I'm struggling with these special moves. But anyway, I am Chaos. Chaos, the mightiest witch doctor on the first continent, wanted to control the evolution of humanity. During his power quest, he cast a mighty spell that backfired and turned him into a foul, disgusting beast, forced to wallow in his own filth for eons. During the cataclysms, Chaos prayed to Frosty, god of Carrion, for release. To restore his greatness, he must defeat all the enemies. Uh, when he the task is completed, Chaos will regain control of his life and lead his tribe to greatness. Special moves is the Battering Ram, the Flying Butt Slam, the Fart of Fury, and the Throw, as well as the Power Puke. Now, I have to admit, I am struggling with these 
special move. There's only one I've managed to solve at the moment of time, which is the battering ram. But also the fatalities is the golden shower and the cannonball. And you also hit humans. Which you do this by pressing forward, down, back, up and forward. Which is quite difficult to do. And my TV's going to turn itself off, which you can't see. But there we go. At the moment of time, I'm on the right. But yeah, once your heart explodes, game is over. But yeah, I've not done one single fatality yet. At the moment, I don't know if it's looking likely. They're quite difficult to achieve. Uh, cannonball is down, forward, up, down. Down, forward, up, down. No, it didn't work. No, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. But anyway, he falls like that, eventually. A win for chaos. Chaos conquers. There you go. Fart fury. <laughs> ah, that worked. <laughs> There you go, fart in your face. There we go, I managed to do that one. Okay, I've done that one. So that's two, fa it's two special moves I've been able to do. I can do the battery ram and the fart of fury. But anyway, this game also has a time limit. Punch repeatedly in the jaw. I'm guessing the arcade version has more special moves than the Amiga version, which I suppose makes sense. Right, so when he's down... No, we can't do the fatality. There we go, Chaos Conquers. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> that stunned him. <laughs> Look, he's stunned. He's down. Oh, dear. From a Rage is a traditional two dimension fighting game in which two players select characters to battle each other in a one on one battle. Or in single player is faced with a campaign of fights against the artificial intelligence AI with increasing difficulty. The final battle in a single player game consists of fighting all the other AI monsters with increasing power bar made available in a mini game prior to the fight. A total of seven characters are playable. Each character has his own specified set of three attack moves and abilities. The object is to deplete the opposing character's health meter before the own players runs out. There's also seven different background stages where fighting takes place. Each one representing one of the characters' domains. The cliff, the hallows, the strip, the cove, the ruins, the tomb, and finally the inferno. Right, I'm now Diablo versus Blizzard. This is actually the hallows. This is actually Blizzard's stage. Right, his heart has exploded. Right, Diablo is evil in his purest form. He was released from his fiery prison deep within Earth, in which he was drawn by the pain and torment caused by the Great Cataclysm. When he has conquered the planet, he lives just to torture it. If no one is left to oppose him, he will burn the entire planet, sparing only cruel and the vicious. Right, special moves to the hot foot, the infernal flash, the mega lunge, the pulverizer, and the torch. Fatalities is the incinerator and the fireball, which is, again, probably not going to get done because it's so difficult to achieve. The manual gives you one special move. That is all. Everything else you're trying to figure out for yourself. Anyway, I'm biting his throat. There you go. Have some of that. His heart's going to explode. Could be a perfect. There you go. Looking very much likely. There you go. Bite to the throat. Total domination. There you go. Uh, don't know. No idea. Just kicked him into the chest. That'll do. I like it. Yes, it's not as good as the original. But there we go. Diablo conquers. There you go. Primal Rage on the Amiga. Next game of all, on the Amiga, once again, this is Zool 2. Big, big fan of Zool 1, but I've never actually finished it before. But again, fantastic quality. Zool and his fabulous female companion, Zeus, are about to face a challenging witch would wilt the knees of even the toughest ninja in an action-packed platform arcade action sequel. Breathe, Jamie. You need choice and skills from the ninth dimension. When you need them, take on the evil crawl and his devious accomplice, the mental block. As they sneak to wipe imagination from the face of existence, can you imagine pitching your wits against such a duo again across six fantastic levels of Major League Mayhem? And what about Zoom, their two-headed pet alien dog, try walking to the wrong end of this cosmic canine catastrophe, and Walkies will take on a whole new dimension? Not bad reading, Jamie. There you go, Zool too. In association with Chubba Chubb, the world's best-selling lollipops. There you go, Zool 2. Not played it much in my life, I have to admit. No, no, what? There you go, Zool 2. Copyright 903, Good Graphics, Software, Limited, Press 5 options. 
Okay, this is Zool 2, a side scrolling platform video game, originally developed by Warp Factory and published by Grimming Graphics for the media in November 1993. It's a sequel to the original Zool, which was released early in 1992 on various platforms. The original release for the Amiga microcomputer Zool 2 was later ported to the Amiga CD32, MS-DOS and Atari Jaguar platforms. It will later been published by Atari Corporation in North America and Europe, in addition to being published in Japan by Mummin Corporation on April 21st, 1995. I love it! Yes, it does suffer a little bit from slowdown, but the game itself is pretty much runs in the same way as the first game, but this time... Yeah, it's been upgraded a little bit, it's a little bit enhanced, but the same will apply. You've got to try and pick up a certain quantity of these items based on the theme you're doing. And in the first game, based on what difficulty you're doing, will determine how much percentage you've got to get. In this one, you get 100%. So when you get to the exit, make sure you have 100% of items. At the top of the screen, it will tell you your energy, your lives, your time, the journey time features here, how many items you've got, how many you've got to do, score, and it also tells you how far away you are from the exit, which is a nice touch, which of course is in the first game as well. Now you do get secrets, there was one I just found there, we used by breaking the wall, but yes, enemies do respawn, but not the same way as it did in the first game, because in the first game, they respawn so quickly, all we got to do is go off the screen and go back on it, and they're back in play again. Anyway, this level is Swan Lake, and again it's great, but yeah, a little bit of slowdown, but you can't have music and sound effects at the same time, but this is all this game, I'm going to make it possible for you. So I can hear the sound effects at the moment of time, but for the video, you'll hear both. Now have these chopper chaps which you get with your head, and yes, you can gain additional weapons, and some of them will actually make you invincible. You also get a bomb, and also a weapon that's quite similar to the first game, which is like a shadow, so you get a second image of yourself. You can follow your movements. So if you fire there, you'll fire twice. Now, of course, you can do the same moves. You can fire and also do a spin in the air. He's a ninja. Of course you can do that sort of thing. But yes, slow down. Now, the first game I love. I have played it to absolute death, but I've never, ever finished it. I still have never, ever got past the second area, which is the music area. I have tried so many times. You have no idea. I still cannot get past it. Now, he's... Jumping is a little bit better here, apart from the slowdown, but also his climbing is a lot better. I didn't particularly like the climbing in the first game. But on this one, bear in mind it's not slippery, then yes, you can actually climb in a normal way, a much preferred way, rather than jumping from wall to wall. Right, we're picking up lots and lots and lots of chubby jumps. Now that does not affect the percentage, it's just all... Or does it? It does actually, my bad, it does. Okay, now you've got these eggs, you actually bounce on the egg. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, we should be fine. We've got four energy. Uh, life, we've got seven. And we have 69%, so we should be okay. But still a little bit more to do. There's things flying around me. I'm not sure what they do. I'm not sure. But you can also get additional lives on the way by score, and I think by picking them up over the course of time as well. Now you can also get energy, and again, the same way you could in the first game. Very similar to Venus the Fly Trap. A part will be released into the air, and you've got to be quick, it will fly away. But if you get it in the time, you get an additional hit. Take too many hits, believe it or not, you die. And I think, yes, you do get checkpoints. You have to hit this, um... I don't know what you call it. It's like a food dispenser. Anyway, it's a sign, something like that. But anyway, what it is, you hit it, and basically when it goes green, then you stay there when you die. But anyway, 82%, which is fantastic. But anyway, we don't want to run out of time. This has a dreaded time limit, but of course, not as bad as other games. But times in games is never a nice thing. Right, okay. But yeah, this one, I think, is, is a lot easier than the first game. But still, I've, I've never finished it, but I've played this nowhere near as much as the first game. For the first game, I remember getting it for Christmas one year. I can't remember what year I got it, but yeah, probably was 1992. Yeah, brilliant. So anyway, uh, 84%. Let's keep going. Now, what I'm going to do for this pickup video is I'm not going to play each game for a long period of time. We'll just do one level and we'll see how we do for time wise. Anyway, hit that, we get additional time. That's it. It's always nice when you get additional time in games, especially games of this difficulty. And also, not as many spikes in this one as you got in Zool. One. So many spikes there. Okay, slide down. He's a cool ninja, isn't he? And of course, this one, you do get your other character, which is Zeus. I'm assuming it's a two-player. I've never ever actually tried it. I'm assuming it probably is. 
You've got platforms you can jump on, some will fall beneath you, so you can get on there. Only a limited amount of time. Anyway, Jamie, we've got more than enough items. Let's head for the exit. We're 194 away. But energy's good, life is good. Yeah, it's going well. You can break through the platforms. There you go, another checkpoint, the right one does, for sure. Checkpoint. There you go. We're invincible. Run into the enemies, we're fine. I love the artwork. I really, really do. But it does have some challenging sections, that's some challenging jumps. Why sometimes you need the help with a yoke. Yeah. Bomb? Brilliant. So many items here. Right, well, gotta take a run and jump. But it does have a good jump. There you go. I'm assuming the first game. Well, I'm assuming this one has boss battles like the first game. But again, I've never seen it. I haven't played this nowhere near as much as the first game. There you go, Golden Pal. Cue the fireworks display. Any remaining time is burning a point. So they go, ended up with like seven lights. Are we happy with that? There you go. Right, we've got 99%. All we've got to try and do is find the exit, which can't be too far away. They can also pick up a bonus icon in each of the levels. Unfortunately, I've missed the one in the second level, but I have got the first and the third. But I'm assuming you need all three. When it was originally released for the Amiga, Zool 2 received positive reception from critics who praised the graphics, sound department, and the gameplay, with some considering it as an improvement over the first game. Other ports of the game received similar positive reception from viewers, while the Jaguar version received mixed reviews from critics since its release and has sold nearly 11,000 copies as of April the 1st, 1995. Right, energy is okay, but it could be so much better. But anyway, five lives. Energy could be better. What we have? Right! Can't be too far away. There we go, boss battle? What is it? It's a block. A white bounty block. Never seen this before. Oh look, okay, this is awesome character on the box. Love the artwork. Right, what's he doing? Again, a lot of slowdown here. It's a shame. It's absolute shame. Bay. No boss energy bar, unfortunately. No surprise, so many games don't have them. If this is all he's going to do, we should be okay with that. Alright. Can I jump? Yes, I can. Go. But yeah, I don't. It's one of those games, the first game. Whether I actually complete it, it's going to take some serious doing, but yeah. One day, I'd love to see beyond the second theme, which is the musical theme. I'd love to see more than that. There you go, is he dead? He's got to be. Look at him in pain. He should be. There we go, boom pow. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Okay, boom. Beautiful the fireworks display. Not quite the same sort of fireworks display you get before the 4th of July or the end of the year, but it'll do. But anyway, it's all two. Next game I bought on Amiga once again, this is Amnios. Fantastic artwork, fantastic box, fantastic game. But again, difficult to read. Alive and killing, penetrate the living hell that is Amnios. Counter your comparatively diminutive ship against the merciless might of ten living, breathing planets in audacious endeavour to rescue imprisoned members of your own persuasion. Pick up ingenious DNA and utilise the fabricate enhanced weaponry to abet your pestilential quest. Oh, forget the ball, just get in there and save the world. There you go. Okay, so the game is Amnios. Amnios features ten living planets made up of foliage, squamas, and epidermis. Your mission in each of these deadly worlds is to either destroy a given percentage of the planet's vital organs, or to rescue a given number of uncaptured lives, humanoids. Any weapon will destroy the planet's vital, but an organ-specific weapon only requires one shot to obtain weapons. You need to collect DNA from the planet's surface and take it to the father ship where arms will be created for you. Now I have to admit, this is a brilliant game. It's difficult to explain though, which is why I've taken a lot of statistics down, but I love it. I think it's a really, really good game. But anyway, I find it's easier to rescue the humanoids than it is to destroy the percentage of bio per planet. Now I've actually got the humanoids in my possession at the moment of time. The 
first level has one humanoid. Level two has two humanoids. Level three has three, etc., etc. What we're trying to do now is find the mother ship. Now you've got to look on your bio scanner on the bottom right to locate where it is. I believe it's a yellow dot. So you've got to take it to the father ship. When you do that, it will summon the boss. But I've got a lot of statistics on this game. But anyway, it's up to move forward. You can also use a mouse, but I'm using the zip stick choice. There we go, that the boss is at the moment on the scene. Now you can get weapon upgrades, but because it's so, so early on in the game, I haven't got anything yet. But you should be okay, as long as you don't stay in one area for too long. But you can fire really, really quickly. I'm not using auto fire, but yeah. You can fire everywhere, basically. You can get some good weapon enhancement, but you can have quite a lot of energy. At the moment of time, I should be okay. But again, boss battle has no energy bar. There you go, boom, pow! First level done. But you do get quite a few lives in this game. Right. Woohoo! There we go! <laughs> right. Father ships. One, the father ship is presented on the first planet. Two on the second, three on the third, and so on. All father ships are capable of creating all types of weapons and of carrying humanoids. One per father ship, basically. Right, there's one. We're going to collect that one before it gets snatched by the snatcher. Right, look for the father ship. Uh, each father ship can only support one DNA strand and one weapon and one humanoid at a time. Hovering over the father ship restores your energy. Enemies called Snatchers are invincible, but they will pick up the humanoids and prevent you from rescuing them, but they will drop them after a short time. If you are carrying a humanoid, the Snatcher will hunt you down. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. Right, let's go and... Ah, you little sneaky little rascal! It's actually taking it away from me. Snatcher snatched it away from me. So yeah, did you have one in your possession? Yeah, they no, steal it. I think they did. I haven't been paying attention. I've actually been reading statistics while doing this really difficult game. Right, so we're going to go and rescue another one. I find it's a lot more easier to go for the humanoid. There you go, snatched away from me. All you can do is just track it down, wait for it to drop it. It just has. Right, have you now? Let's go and find the father ship. And it's snatched. No, it's not snatched away from me. Get out of there, Jamie. Get out of there. Alright. Ten levels this game. I won't do too much for this video. We've got a shield. Fantastic. That is brilliant. Okay. One nearby. I mean, you can go for the percentage. Yes, you can. But I think that takes a lot longer. Another one's been snatched away. But I do have a shield. Right, I've got it. I don't know how I did it, but I've got it. Right, go to the father ship. Hopefully, it's coming out okay for this video. Hopefully. I'm using the OSSC here. Right, one more humanoid remains. So yes, level 10 is going to be 10 humanoids, which will probably take ages. Right. That. There you go! Boss battle, where are you? Okay. No timing in this game, which is fantastic. There we go. Again. Brilliant artwork. Shield, not great. Again, it's not great. Luckily, it's not a fast-moving boss, this one. Get a few shots in and fly away. There, there, Jamie. Energy is critical. Just avoid the worms. They're difficult to avoid. They're difficult attack patterns. Oh dear. Watch out for the worms, Jamie. There you go, boop and pow. That'll do for this video. Amnios. Next game I bought on the CC4 this time. This came out in the year 2016. This is the Bear Essentials. Poor old Bear. He spent the summer being incredibly lazy and ignoring all of his chores. But now Mrs. Bear has finally caught up with him and is determined that he will find enough fruit to last the approaching winter. Venture out into the wild to find all of the fruit from your areas about Bear's home. But stay clear of other animals. They're looking for food too. There you go. There we go, next on the list, the Bear Essentials, Pond Software 2016. Okay, this is the Bear Essentials, this is the Central Cave. Alright, I'm going. Poor old Bear has just spent the summer being incredibly lazy and ignoring all of his chores. Mrs. Bear has finally caught up with him though, and is demanding that he finds enough fruit 
326 apples should do it to last them through the approaching winter. He won't be allowed home until his task is complete, and to add to his troubles, all the other animals are looking for the food too. So best stay clear of them. Right, it's a brilliant game. I love it. Done by a single screen. At the bottom of the screen, this is called Here We Go. On the bottom left is your life, which is five. And the bottom right, also is five, is the amount of apples we've got. So yeah, a lot to do. We've still got 320 to find. There's 326 in this game. Now, each screen has a door. Sometimes only one, sometimes more than that. This one's got four. This one is called Which Way? So basically, it's a collector map. And... Or avoid them up, whichever way they want to get it. But we've got to try and get these apples. Now, you don't have any weapons in any shape or form. You can't kill enemies by jumping on their heads. It's not that sort of game. Basically, you've got to find them, collect them, and get out of there. And don't take damage. Now, of course, there's going to be enemies all over the place. Now, some of them will attack you, and some of them just move up and down. But that frog can kill you with extending tongue, and it's a one hit die situation. Now, you can also get additional lives in this game. I think it's one per area. We've got to try and find a character, a very well-known character. Hopefully we'll find one. This one is called Branch Off. So yeah, it does seem like there's a lot to do, but there is. But also, the apples are quite close together, so shouldn't be too bad. But it's not going to be a long play today. But anyway, it's got different themes, and each theme has different enemies. Well, I love the music as well. What I would love to change about it is his jumping isn't the greatest. You don't get a lot of distance in your jumping. So make sure you leave the jump quite late. Especially if it's not moving up and down or left and right, whatever the case may be. Anyway, this one's called Dead Trees. Some enemies do move faster than others. But yeah, sometimes you need some pixel perfect situations. Sometimes. Now, some areas you can't collect all the apples in that area. This is where you want to go if you want to go somewhere else. And it also updates you with how much you've done so far. So at the moment of time, 18 for the forest. Yeah. Okay, I've only got 18, but it does say there, break times. So okay, a quick drink. Why not, eh? Why not? <laughs> okay. Break time is over. Let's carry on getting these apples. And like I say, his jump can be a bit of an issue. So yes, you've got to literally just jump as high as you can. You might have to sort of catch it with your ear. Venture out into the wild to find all the fruit from the areas around Bear's home. Yes, even the strange glowing fruit from the abandoned mine that Bear has been itching to explore lately. Rumours has it that the mine was sealed up back in the 80s after a whole spectrum of problems. What could be down there? I don't know. I've not been there. So, again, go wait for the bird to do its thing. Now, apparently, according to the manual, there is actually a map in this game, which appears when you press the pause button, which is run stop. Tried it, it doesn't work. Anyway, let's go to Cloudy, shall we? Why not? Okay, so this is the bigger tree. We've got 24, now 25. But yeah, in the pause screen, you should see a map. I haven't seen it, but if you're in the pause screen, you can select the music on or off by pressing left or right. And also, in the pause screen, if you hold the fire button down, you actually quit the game. But anyway, don't do that yet. But anyway, in between. But yeah, so far, the only enemy I've seen that attacks you in another way, other than just moving up and down or left or right, is the frog. But it's also the only enemy I've seen so far that stays good to the spot. Now, some areas you cannot reach. You have to get there some other way, by either falling from another screen or finding another door. Can you find a door in a beer stalk? I don't know. But anyway, it's all perfect collecting, not only for jumping. Avoid the monkey. 36 apples. No additional life yet. So this one, we're going to have to fall from here. Go back up again. Don't fall off the edge. Right, you just find some additional lights. Okay, so make sure it's clear below before we go and make that dangerous drop. But then falling from a great big height won't kill your character. Right, so this is the update. From the forest, I've gained 23 out of 54. Cloudy, 16 out of 72. None from rocky, jungle or mining. Let's go back to the forest, shall we? Break time. Okay, we have returned. Of course, whenever you turn to another area, how you left it in terms of 
apples. It will stay that way. And there we go. Our first is true life. There's a creature. There you go. One per area. So we've got six lives now. Right, and avoid the blackbird. Again, leave that jump as late as possible. Right, we've got three doors. And there's another frog. And a spider, a blackbird, and a fly. And they're all deadly. Okay, break time over. Let's go to the Rocky. You'll be given passwords at certain points in the game, the first of which will allow you to continue the game from the start of the mining area. Be sure to try out other passwords you spot to see what they do. Okay, additional area, additional enemies. Now we've got frogs jumping up and down, but not attacking you with their tongues. So avoid those at all costs. You are free to explore the areas in any order but the mine will only make after all other areas complete. Make note of the location of the mine entrance. When you discover it, infinite continues will be granted in the mining area. And it will continue from the current room, and this will be very handy, you'll see. Oh, and be careful down there, it's pretty manic. Right, on we go. 59. 60. Let's avoid the jumping frog. This is on the rocks. Right. Avoid the bumblebee. So many games, new and old, have bumblebees. Bumblebees and wasps and hornets are the worst. That and drips and bats. I haven't seen bats yet, but I wouldn't be surprised there is. Gonna be some bats in this game. We've got spikes. Okay, avoid the spikes. 64. We have bridge. Does it collapse? It does collapse. Oh, good thing I did. Avoid that, because I'm going to fall onto my spikes. Right, high and low. Jamie, you're going to get stuck. Right, it's fine, it's backed off, it's fine. Right, how do we get through... Right, so that's too high. Okay, I have to go a difficult route. Jump over him. Jump over spikes. Not many spikes, but of course, spikes are always deadly. But again, it's a slow moving enemy, so it can be difficult to jump over. Okay, I found an area I haven't been yet. This is Trunk Asian. Okay, got two frogs. I don't know what those things are, no idea. Not sure. Some sort of bug, I expect. Right, we've got a snail at the top. But yeah, there's not many games, platform games I've played where you can't kill anything. It's quite rare, I have to admit. But anyway, this is definitely an avoid em up. Right, avoid him and avoid him. Right, we go and get these two apples and we move on to the next game. The amount of time, we've got 70. 72, there we go. Superb game, The Bear Essentials. We're back at the Central Cave. Is 72 enough? 72 is not enough, and she does it in a way that Jet Set Willy would approve of. There we go. Superb game. Next to my ball is a brand new game. This is R-Type Final 2. It's absolutely outstanding. I have to admit, I was in two minds to include it in this video, being such a new game. I don't want to spoil it for people, but spoiler alert, it's brilliant. The legendary side-scrolling series returns. Experience side-scrolling shoot 'em up gameplay with 3D visuals and abundance of features. Upgrade, evolve, destroy. There you go, superb. There you go. R-Type Final 2 came out in the year 2021. I have to admit, I wasn't sure whether to include it in this pickup video or not, but spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I won't play it too much, but we'll show you a few levels. Okay, so after my first week in owning this game, here's my current progress. I am Team Artai, I've played it for 8 hours, 41 minutes and 08 seconds. There's some of my medals. And I am currently a second lieutenant. Craft so far, I've got 20. You start the game off with three. So yeah, still a lot to do. There's 99 in this game. But there we go. Okay, so the game this is R-Type Final 2, a whole scrolling scrolling shooter video game. Developed and published by Granzella, part of Irem's long line R-Type series. It's a sequel to R-Type Final, released in 2004, and the first R-Type game in over a decade after the release of R-Type Tactic 2, Operation Glitter Chocolate in 2009. The game is released from Microsoft Windows, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Xbox XS on April 29th, 2021. And how cool does that sound? What a game! It's absolutely outstanding, which of course 
What's always going to be a pleasing thing for me is this R type is really my favourite game. I love it. I've played this loads already in the week that I've owned it. It's the first week I've owned it. There's 99 craft in total. You start off with three. I've got 20 so far. But it's absolutely brilliant. I can't fault this game. It is difficult. Hard as now, right from the go. But what I don't like about it is not the game itself. This is horrible controller. I'm not a fan of controller pads. I never have been and never will be. I like joysticks. What, an Xbox One? I don't know if there is any. I'm sure there probably is somewhere. I need to look. But anyway, we'll get used to this controller. And I have played it a lot. Right, the Western version of the game was published by NIS America and are set to release on April 30th, 2021. R-Type Final 2 is the first game in the series to release outside of Japan since R-Type Dimensions in 2009. Right, so basically, what can you do in here? Well, of course, you got the, the Force. The Force is indestructible. You can go on the front or the back and you detach it by pressing the A button. And when it's not attached to your craft, you can also fire and it all depends on what craft you're using, it depends on what force it has. All crafts have different weapons and beams. When you've got the beam, of course, when you hold the fire button down, the longer you hold it down, the bigger the beam. The problem with this one is it takes a lifetime to charge, but some crafts do have level 2, and some do have level 3 beams. You have the normal beam, you have the high beam, and some have a strong beam. Which takes some serious plus and holding down and play that. You get the dose to the bottom left, at which moment of time is at 1.5. Very, very low indeed. And you get that by absorbing bullets and enemies by crashing into the force. Now the force will protect you from pretty much everything. It won't protect you from a laser, but everything else it should be okay. But anyway, boss battle, not a long level, and the music is actually outstanding. The return of a previous boss, but not the same way. He's been for a rough time, now he's in ice. Charge up that beam. The music is sensational, it looks tremendous. Brilliant. Right, superb. Now of course you can also speed up your craft by using the buttons on the top of the controller. Speed 1 is the slowest and the highest is speed 4, which is the fastest. Which is what I tend to use the most. I've never gone to speed 1. You don't want to be too slow in a game like this. It goes to number three. Why he's doing that? Charge up that beam. Again, like the other ones, we're getting on his weakness stump. Give him plenty of time to fully max out the beam. There we go. Unfortunately, the main weapon I've got at the moment of time is doing most of the work because my reflection laser isn't really making any contact. Each class has different weapons. Different beams, different doses. But there we go, it's superb, absolutely magnificent. First level done. Whew. First level, investigation, the abandoned space city. Okay, this is stage 2.0, destruction invaded plant factory. This is a score attack. On April 1st, 2019, when Zelda released a teaser trailer for r type Final 2, later that day, the company confirmed via Twitter the game was not a little cool joke and the game was actively in development. A crowdfunding campaign was announced to be taking place in May, with a digital campaign taking place in October the same year. The crowdfunding campaign ended on November 1st, 2019. Right, again, a superb stage. Difficult though. After level 1, the difficulty really skyrocketed into the air. But yeah, these score challenges are really, really good. It's a nice idea for this game. But anyway, you need the right weapon at the right time. Now, yellow is good. But it's not great at long range, it's more of a short range weapon. Blue is good for enemies above and below you. Red is great for long distances. But again, it depends what class you're using. But of course, the force is magnificent, it's brilliant. And again, depending on what class you're using, you will determine what force it does, what weapons it has, what doses. There's so many weapons in this game, there's so many crafts in this game, there's so many possibilities in this game. And you can also customise your car, which is a nice addition to this game, but I've never actually done it before. Right, charge up that beam. There we go, boom, pow. But yes, dose is low. But yeah, if the, if the force is not attached, you leave it floating around all over the place, and yes, you hit that dose up very, very quickly. But in our type Delta, it does feel like a lot quicker than this one. But it's good when you use it. Probably won't be getting it here. Not enough enemies here, not enough bullets here. Again, not only long level. Again, hit that everything you've got. Life on the charge. 
But that and the combination of force should do the trick. Right, there's tentacles all over the place. Okay, big enough part this next boss. This next boss is quite a second boss. I'm always switching the force and front to back or back to front, whatever the case may be. You have to. But even if you can find space, force can be a bit of a handful. Again. So it's bullets, Jamie. Just get in there, there we go. Charge it up, Jamie. I don't think we're going to do it this time. No, we're going to go speed for and go for it. No, we did it. Okay, we're hanging in there. Right, boss battle. Doors closed at the moment of time. We've got to get rid of these tentacles. Yeah, it's a very tactical boss, this one. Right, I'm not going to go for yellow. Let's stick with blue. But yeah, very much like level 6 of our type boss. Yeah. Switches from back to front or front to back. Now, at the moment of time, there's one of them, but it could be two very, very soon. We've got to keep these tentacles at bay. What happens is, is every time a bullet from that enemy hits a surface, another tentacle will spawn. And there is a little bit of a delay until it arrives, but sometimes it's difficult to see those bullets when there's so much going on. But you can shoot their bullets, so if you can, shoot it before it hits the surface. But again, the force is doing what it does best. Doing all the work, pretty much. It's brilliant, it really is. They cannot kill the thing in the middle, not yet, anyway. Alright, that means it gets faster. Again, force do your thing. Again, they can find spice, it can be a handful. It's on the right side, we can use the beam. Got to shoot the blue area. That's its weakness. Some of it switches between the two. Again, it's a fantastic boss. You can use it too. Fires more, and it moves faster. Again, it's changing, it really is. A lot of changing bosses in this game. A lot of very changing levels in this game. It's really going to be quite tricky here. Batman in circles. I don't think there's a time limit here, it shouldn't be. Following me. Clear force, and there are these tentacles. Not in the right place, there we go, got there in the end, but pow! That was challenging. And that's just the normal difficulty. You've got the Bido difficulty and the r -Typer. But it's a brilliant game. I absolutely love it. There we go. Score attack. Brilliant. Okay, we'll do one more level. Level 3. Breaking in, storing our laboratory. Now, our type is very well known for having a level based around a massive spaceship. Normally, it appears in level 3. Most of the time. This is level 3. This is the latest one. It's fantastic. And again, it's difficult. It's a bullet hell. This level does have quite a few enemies appearing from previous R types. It's always good to see. Not many boss battles in previous games, but it's always nice to see additional bosses going into the mix. It's quite a little bit, it's always good to see. These ones are called Hansen, pretty much been an every single R type. But these appeared first in R type 2. They didn't feel there, they didn't feel here. But one full beam shot should do it. But again, you've got to try to destroy this. Spaceship piece by piece. Again, amazing soundtrack. And if you're going to buy the full work, which is what I did, £50, it arrives with a CD soundtrack. And yes, it's in my car, but it wasn't paid loads. It's not the full soundtrack. If it was, it would be on a double disc. But what is on there is brilliant. Alright, keep us at bow, Jamie. Alright. Again, the force is going to be going everywhere. Yeah, not the best weapon for the job, but it's hanging in there. So am I. Oh, 
you want it to fly. It's guns at fly. Do what you gotta do. Make it easy. Right. Superb. Those at 11%. Can't do a lot of damage with that. Right. Maximum speed. Right, again, sure it's guns. Do it quickly. Draw those bullets whenever you can, if it's possible. If it's doable, do it. Believe it or not, you're forced to not protect you from that. Again, fantastic. Oh, uh, some of that. More where that came from. It's nice that they continue with these sort of levels. And of course, the boss battle is a part of the spaceship. It usually is. It's pretty much done in the same fashion. It's nearly there. Again, destroy its guns. Destroy it piece by piece. No continues on a score challenge. Okay. So of course, you've got to destroy it in the same way. But of course, only when it's open. It's not open all the time. It never is, really, is it? Let's have those devastating lasers. Alright, charge up the beam, but take your time to do it. It's not a big area to shoot. What makes it difficult though is, is those lasers and the enemies if you try and leave side. And that's fire if they have to, and fire if they need to. Deadly. Devastating. Lasers, Jamie. Like that. Right, come on, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Woohoo! There we go. That's more enough for this video. Super game. I love it. Hard Light Final Two. Cannot wait for the new levels. I paid twenty pounds for additional levels. There we go. So of course, all those statistics you get at the bottom, you use to buy additional craft. But there we go. Superb. Okay, buddy, this is my pickup video. That's what I bought in March, April 2021. And like I said in my previous pickup video, I'm going to be reducing these videos from one month to one every two months. It helps. And while I was recording this video, another one turned up. Superb. Anyway, brilliant. Until next time, this is Jamie from Modest Games. Please like this, comment, share, please subscribe to my channel, fit to fan pass on the Twitch, just type in Modest Games if you find it fairly easy. Please remember to hit the bell icon, that notify you means that no fat is it. No digital videos, you retro page that cheats, have a big banking and live streams in Friday night, you can try and vent the clocks of other weeks. Ciao bye, see ya. That was terrible, Jamie. Terrible, terrible display. Okay, so the game is PP Hammer Engine Magic Drill. Weapon, Jamie, weapon. Okay, so the game is PP Hammer and his. And that was a message. It's a weapon in here. Where's my phone? Oh, it's here. Okay, so the game is PP Hammer and his pneumatic weapon. A 901 video game by Amiga. By the Amiga. Jamie, you've got like six games, seven games to play, and you're struggling on the first line of the first game on the. In this game, the player controls a character called Peepy Hammer, who is on a quest to discover the quiet old treasure in the series, and there's more. Peepy Hammer carries a jackhammer. Oh, poo. Castle and ice. The fifth level theme is based on Legoland's. 
Let's not base them though, land. They're gonna didn't exist when this game came out. For eons, during the, the cataclysm, Chaos prayed to Frosty, god of charism, for release. To restore his greatness, most defeat of all the characters. Trouble is, my webcam's in the way. Right, the golden shower. Where's his. Uh... Portal release for home consoles and personal computers. Efforts were particularly. The game was released on Microsoft Windows, Nintendo Switch, Xbox 4. Xbox 4, Jamie. No, not Xbox 4. 